welcome back. Thank you for joining me for the second half or the last 15 minutes of your yoga practice tonight. Um, again, it's Katrina Parr, E-R-Y-T. Um, so happy that you're here and joining me for a quick yoga practice. Um, I hope you just completed the, um, the utitas, the standing variation in the first 30-ish um, minutes of the class. And now here we are um, inside the house and I'm just gonna show you a few floor poses and some relaxation poses. We're gonna start in Upavishta Konasana. So that is in a seated wide angle pose. So come to what is a comfortable angle for you. Um, again, I have some of my, I have my props here. I've got a strap and I've got um, some blocks. Maybe just find it's a pillow or maybe it's a cushion or whatever it is that you can use to try to find yourself comfortable in this pose. What we'll do is just have a wide angle here and then activate the ankles. So flexing at the ankles and lift through the crown of the head. And then take yourself forward, hinging forward and sitting very forward on the sits bones. And then maybe this block becomes an elbow rest or um, as you get comfortable in this pose, and we'll breathe here for about 10 breaths, this block might become a headrest, or maybe you'll choose to not use a block or a pillow or whatever it is that you had. So you don't lose that length in your spine, so don't compromise the length in your spine as you start to bow forward. Keep the length. Keep the ankles active. You'll listen to the sensations that you're gonna feel in the backs of the legs, your hamstrings, your gastric nemias. You'll actually tune into some, uh, some warmth and some activity on the tops of your legs as your quadriceps engage to make this movement possible. And then you can actually use the ujjayi breath that we were practicing in our earlier sequence of poses using that same um, depth of your breath and the lifting of the back of the throat to let yourself relax in this pose. Let's take about three more breaths. One final inhale, a full exhale. And then walk your hands towards you to lift back up. Put the block aside for now. We're going to scoop the knees up and bring the feet together and we're going to move into Parsvakonasana. So similarly here, sitting forward on the sits bones. Find the length in your spine like your crown of your head is tied to a helium balloon. Shoulders peel back, hinging at your hip as you exhale, bow into a forward fold. So here's where your strap might come in handy. You might just take the strap around the ball of the feet and hug that strap with your hands. And same thing here, maintain that length in your spine. As you hinge at your hips and you bow into a forward fold, let the hinge at the hips be where the action of this pose comes in. So almost like you're folding a piece of paper, that's the fold at the hips. Keep the shoulders peeled back. This shouldn't feel like you're rounding the shoulders. You shouldn't be rounding your thoracic spine. And once you feel comfortable in your variation of this pose, you can point from the crown of the head toward the toes. And let's come out of the pose by lifting up. Why not just take your hands behind you for Purvo Tanasana, leave your hands about three to six inches behind you and elevate the hips, gaze up at the ceiling, and then lower back down. Let's come into Baddha Konasana. I'm gonna go into a side view here. Um, taking your hands at your feet, no, I changed my mind. Let's go Hands at your feet, shoulders peel back, very similar to how we set up the first pose. Main thing here is Bhadakanasana is bound angles, so the angles of the knees um, come into play. Soles of your feet match, toes to toes, heels to heel. Lengthen your spine, open your chest, open your heart, just as you did in 
all of those heart opening poses earlier in practice. Let the knees take gravity. And then as you exhale, bow into a forward fold. The very same hinge at your hips. Releasing the inner thighs. We're going to take a few breaths in this pose. The forehead just floating closer and closer toward your toes. Your variation of this pose, whatever feels comfortable. If you feel you've gone too deep into this pose, come out. Maybe just a few inches back. We're going to come out of this pose by lifting back up. And we're going to go back into the same pose. Like here's where I'll give you that side view. That side view. Um, coming back in that same pose, and then just using your arms to come down to a reclined version. This is Setu Vandasana. I'm sorry, yeah. Um, Supta Vadakanasana. This is reclined bound angle. So reconnect the feet heel to heel, toes to toes. Let the knees take gravity. And your arms can be down at your sides or arms out in angel wings. This is not your Shavasana, but it feels like Shavasana because your body gets to relax. So if you want to close your eyes, go for it. But uh, make sure that you're staying present. Make sure that you're staying very focused and very here in the present moment. And you can scan your body just as you did in our meditation earlier. Searching for the sensations from the crown of the head down to the length of your root. The knees will get heavier and heavier. If you find yourself having a thought, totally cool, it happens, but just let those thoughts drift away right now. come out of this pose by lifting the knees. And if you have a brick handy, grab your brick. If you can catch a brick nearby, just have a brick at your side. We're going to move into Setu Bandhasana now. So your feet are at hip distance and parallel. Big toes point forward. You can't see, but your feet should be parallel like your toes are pointing forward. Take a deep inhale here and align your spine. And as you exhale, elevate from the hips. Coming up to a bridge pose. Let's take this bridge pose for five breaths. And the work here is in finding the core, doing the work. So naturally the glutes pipe up and take on the work. So mind, body, connect with your gluteus medius, gluteus maximus, and let those glutes release. And by turning off your glutes, you find the work being done in your core. So that's your your deep core muscles, your psoas, your iliocostalis muscles. And try to keep the knees drawn together like you're holding an imaginary volleyball. Come up on your tippy toes and then roll vertebrae by vertebrae back down to the mat and take your break. So now we're gonna slide the brick below the sacrum. So elevate back up to your Setu Bandhasana. Put the brick at the very bottom of your low back where your low back meets your glutes and that's your sacrum area. So I've got it on like a higher orientation. You can certainly go down to the next level down. 100% up to you. Whatever your comfort zone is. So let's relax back into this pose. So heels meet the mat. Come back down to your heels and you're taking the same pose you're just taking all of the work out of it and then allowing the heart to relax open. You're allowing the stretch and the openness for your shoulders, the openness for your torso. So you can stay right here because we're set up for a really nice, um, 
Salambha Sharvangasana. I'll just kind of instruct you through that pose, but it's completely optional. So um, having the brick below your sacrum allows you to lift the feet off the mat. And then you can come up into pointing your toes up at the ceiling. So the action you'll make is just engaging the quad, engaging the core. Um, a very, still a very reclined pose. And it's very healthy for the circulation, your blood flow. So breathe deep if you've taken this variation, this reclined restorative variation of Salambha Sharvangasana. And no matter where you are, if you've moved into Salambha Sharvangasana, you can move back down into your Setu Bandhasana bridge pose. And we will all lift up on the tippy toes and remove the brick from beneath your sacrum. Coming back down to the mat. Hug your knees into your chest, roll from side to side. Take your hands behind your hamstrings, roll up onto the shoulders and then roll all the way back up to sitting. And we're gonna move into um, Vakarisa Kanasana. So let's take a bolster actually. I'm gonna put the other props aside. We're kind of done with those props now. You don't have to have a bolster. A pillow or a blanket is fine. Rolling up a blanket or um, stacking up pretty much anything that's soft. We're gonna go up to a wall, similarly to how I have my mat here, and come down to a low squat. And pressing your sits bones up against the wall, come down to a reclined pose. And then like I'm doing, reposition yourself so that you're on the bolster. <laughs> That was not my smoothest one. Okay, so, so again, soles your feet up the wall, very similar to Salama Sharvangasana, except we are up against the wall, allowing the legs to relax, and you're on your bolster. Hopefully you've gotten a good distance close enough to the wall. So, if you're here, and I hope you, I hope you made it here, you can hide it, um, relax. Try to turn off the muscles of the leg. You're elevated, you've elevated your hips. So this is actually an inversion because your heart is above your head. So breathe here. Let's take five breaths. And you can use your ujjayi breath. Use the natural depth of the flow of your breath. Okay, so stay right here. If you're enjoying this pose, this is where you can hang out. If you would like to advance into Halasana Plow Pose, what's cool about this pose is that you can actually use the wall as your kickstand to get up into Halasana. So you can press your foot into the wall, catch yourself at your hips, and take both feet overhead. Halasana. Move back into Viparita, Viparista Kanasana. Legs up the wall. And let's all exit out of this pose by tucking one knee in, tucking both knees in, and rolling off of the bolster. And we're going to move into Shavasana, the vast pose. So if you have that pillow, blanket, whatever it is that you found as your prop, you'll move that closer to you. You can put that right beneath your knees. And then find yourself comfortably lying down on your mat. Relax both legs out wider than hip distance. Relax to the outside of your heels. Let your arms lay open, palms open in the ceiling. Close your eyes. Resting the weight of the head on the very back of your skull. Eyes closed. And then return to that natural flow of your breath. 
You can let go of your ujjayi breath now, so there's no need to use any pranayama exercises here while you relax in Shavasana. So just using this time to let all the work you've done in your yoga practice enter into a cellular layer of your body, let yourself completely melt into the mat and allow this final relaxation to be exactly what you need to do. If you haven't found a comfortable spot, make any adjustments that you need to in order to feel comfortable. Your Shavasana should be about five to 10 minutes and we'll hang out here to relax in our, our Shavasana together for a few, for about 10 more breaths. Eyes closed. Take a moment just again to scan your body, finding any areas of your body that have yet to relax. Locate those areas, breathe into those areas that have resisted relaxation. If you find yourself having a thought Witness the thought, let it drift away, and bring yourself right back to the present moment in your body. Feel free to pause the video right now and take Shavasana for as long as you like. If you're gonna exit your Shavasana, let's do this together. Let's drop both knees into your chest. Roll from side to side, massaging your spine into the mat one more time. Let's roll and relax on either your left or your right side. Use your core and pressing your arms down to come up to a comfortable sitting posture. Find that same sitting posture you found maybe earlier. Let's inhale and sweep the arms up. Let your palms touch above you. And exhale as you bring your palms to your heart. And thank you so much for joining me for an Empower Yoga practice this evening. Namaste. You guys are awesome. Thank you for tuning in. Um, it's a really interesting time that we're in right now, so I will continue to send virtual yoga practice to, practices to you. Um, continue to share your feedback with me, comment in the comments of these videos if you'd like. Um, and we're all in this together, so really kind of a unique thing to do your yoga practice from a group setting and now into a kind of this very personal in-home experience. So. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have or give you guidance or feedback on your yoga practice throughout. Namaste.